All of the technology used by the scientists in the LBA project works on solar energy, as does the rainforest they are studying. Biologists, chemists, physicists and meteorologists all analyze the data that is registered in this distant Amazon enclave, fully aware of the fact that their conclusions affect us all. They have been preparing this open-air laboratory for three years, and now over 200 people will be working here during another five years. The LBA project meticulously studies the growth of the trees, investigating these giants' every minute gesture because of its self-sufficient physiology. Everything, as if the jungle were one great organism, as if it were a human body. The rain that falls upon the treetops is not exceedingly nutritious, and only when captured by the Amazon canopy leaves that are used as an infinite digestive system and elaborated by photosynthesis or the decomposition of the dead leaves, after this process, it will finally reach the ground converted into nutritious food. The tree leaves here are palate, stomach, and intestine, and by way of these, water becomes vegetable matter. Three 12-meter deep wells have been dug into the hectare that has been isolated from the rain by way of drainage systems to find out what trees survive on when submitted to this hydric stress. Scientists have also installed sensors deep into their roots so they can observe the behavior under periods of extreme drought, such as that produced by the global warming from the greenhouse effect. Obeying a natural cycle, the dry season lasts from May through September, the period in which there is very little rain. Over the past 10 years, this season is extending itself thanks to mankind's intervention with fires and chainsaws. Without a forest, there is no rain, and without rain, there will be no forest, a closed and cruel cycle which affects the world climate, and the effort from here is to get precise information. So that we can understand the effects that the Amazonia has on the global climate, imagine that we throw a stone into a pond, and immediately after that, waves spread out. The Amazonia has that same effect by way of the clouds. The rain in Amazonia is so concentrated, so powerful and deep, that it is as if we threw a stone into the atmosphere, and from there millions of waves spread throughout the globe. Whether it rains more or less can affect winter in Europe, or the monsoon in China. Therefore, if we deforest the jungle, we will be affecting the rain cycle and will undoubtedly be inciting an environmental catastrophe of global proportions. This is perhaps the only place in the world where it rains to everyone's liking. The rain that falls upon our European cities was also manufactured in this green factory. When the Amazonia breathes, its humid breath refreshes us all. In the third millennium, mankind will have to learn how to interpret the messages derived from the conversation between jungle and atmosphere with all the technological advances they have at hand. The climatic changes may very well have their origin in the systematic destruction of the jungles, and the solution is its firm conservation. The carbon dioxide produced by the greenhouse effect is absorbed and assimilated by its leaves. My co-worker is measuring the photosynthesis. And what is photosynthesis? On the tree leaves, we find a green-colored matter that covers them, the substance of which is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll captures the CO2 from the air and constructs a tissue similar to cellulose and many others that form the plant. To measure all of this, we use an instrument and we introduce a leaf leaf. 
This machine measures the percentage of CO2 that is circulating inside the leaf. And that way, we know how much of the carbon that is in the atmosphere is being captured by a tree like this one. Many young people are involved in the defense of what is the largest rainforest on the planet. They work on this project that is financed by the European Union and the government of Brazil. NASA, with all its high technology, is not looking for alien life here. It proves with an investment of over 10,000 million pesetas that what happens here in the Amazonia will have incalculable consequences for all the countries, for all the inhabitants of the planet. Up until now, the saying that the Amazonia was the lungs of the world was a cliché. But the moment the conclusions of this mammoth investigation are published, those who govern the lives and futures of the over 6,000 million living beings that inhabit this planet will have to commit themselves to preserving this mechanism well-oiled for all our sakes. Gaspar, what is this? These are baby tortoise of the Podocnemis expansa species, the largest sweetwater tortoise in the world. I would like you to meet my friend Gaspar. I want you to get a good look at him. We can't see his face with the cap on. This man fills humanity, big, big, physically and humanely, along with his son Bruno and his co-workers. He's dedicated all his life to defending the Amazon rivers. It's not by chance that you observe all this nature everywhere. All this future here in the Das Mortes River, an unusual name for a river full of life. Sensitivity and scientific rigor is the vital combination that our following guardian of the future and his team use to keep the Amazon rivers alive. Gaspar, like our orchid admirer, is also self-taught. He didn't go to college, but his experience in hard field work make him a professor in fluvial environment, one of the best. Throughout his life, he has seen the population of the Amazon turtle descend in different rivers. Over the last few years, he has been restoring the lost balance, enclosing the breeding areas that are more vulnerable. The turtle doesn't know it, but this is a good man, their most efficient life insurance for their threatened populations. Before Gaspar arrives on this inhospitable beach full of good intentions, this fertile female will have been here at the light of the moon. It will lay its eggs on the riverbank, and after having buried them, will go back into the night. Months later, that same beach will see the dawn ironclad and protected by the militant green movement of Gaspar and his men. There will no longer be adult specimens, but from the beach sands, the fruit of a seed well set will spring forth, not without enemies. Mm. Each female can lay up to 150 eggs, but nature's mathematical logic will hopelessly divide this number by 10. Of each lame, only 15 little turtles will survive their first hours of life. The Caracara and the Urubus have been waiting at the door of this nursery for river turtle for a week. They have chicks in their nests that are waiting to be fed, 
and there is a lot of food on the white sands of this beach. A lot of food. These predators form a part of the complicated crossword puzzle into which these turtles have come into the world. And their hunt is in itself part of the ecological balance that suits us all. But in this region, man entered the scene a number of years ago, taking 58 million eggs away in one sweep. Gaspar's watch has put an end to the greed of those people. There were a lot of tortoise hunters in the old days, but this activity has stopped since we're here. The traders respect our work and no longer come around. Not too long ago, they would come and take thousands of tortoise, take the eggs to make a fat out of it and sell it in Sao Paulo or Rio de Janeiro. It was used in cosmetics. Our work takes place on six beaches. Now that they feel safer, the tortoise that disappeared years ago are coming back. And it's great satisfaction to see them breed on these beaches year after year. What this man avoids telling us is the difficult fight he has had with the turtle egg dealers. Today, with victory on his side, he prefers to enjoy the sight of the small turtles on Das Mortes River. Just like heroic sperm, this young turtle becomes one with the refreshing flow, as if it were an ovum. <laughs> 